Today we're going to go ahead and look at Altium Designer, create our first footprint and schematic symbol. And uh, before we do that though, let's go ahead and check that our license is good. So license to University of California Davis. If that doesn't work, uh, go ahead and, and ask your TA for help fixing that. Now Altium gives you this default project group. We're going to go ahead and rename this to Senior Design. We are going to create an integrated library to collect all of the different components we will need in a design. And we will be adding to that, first of all, a PCB library and a schematic library. All right, this is our PCB library. And let's go ahead and add a schematic library. Cool. Let's quickly just save these as All right, we have everything named as Senior Design. Let me just save all before we continue. Now, just for some setup stuff, as we talked about before, there's a lot of different layers in creating a PCB design. Um, we are going to create sort of a standard for everything we do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take all of these layers off to start out with. Mechanical layer one, let's go ahead and rename this. We're going to use mechanical layer one to define our board outline. Let's add another layer. Mechanical layer 13, we are going to use for 3D bodies, such as the uh, uh, just the physical volume that will represent that component. Mechanical layer 29 will be used for the assembly top. Layer 30 is going to be used for the bottom assembly. And let's go ahead and just have on top assembly, 3D bodies. Let's turn on overlay, the solder mask, and our top layer. So this should look pretty much identical to uh, what we had in the previous video when we were talking about data sheets. Next, I'm going to set up our grid on here. Now you'll notice everything is in mils. If you tap the Q key, you'll see it converts to millimeters. Most of what we're going to do in footprint creation will be in millimeters, so I'll change it to that. And I'll type G and grid properties. I personally like lines, so let's do lines. And let's do a step size of 0.25 millimeters. Well, that's it in terms of setting things up. Let's take a look at what we got in terms of this. Um, this is the accelerometer gyroscope magnetometer that we looked at before. And we're going to start by looking at the physical dimensions. Uh, so this will be used to create that 3D body, the 3D model, as well as creating the assembly. So the assembly will basically trace the outline here. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So we have E and D are uh, 3 and 3 millimeters, and our height is A, which is 1. So I have my scratch paper here. I'm going to write that down as part of the package. Next, I will take a look at 
the actual landing pattern. And based on that, what I typically do is I will create, uh, on my scratch paper, I will write the center point of each pad and give it a coordinate in millimeters, as well as for each pad, the width and length. So you'll see that the length of this pad is 0.7, the width is 0.225. Uh, this big one in, be in the middle is 1.54 and 1 1.7. And if we were to calculate the center position for this pad here, we could do it using uh, this 0.4 millimeters here. We know that this is going to be uh, 0.4 divided by 2 from here to here. And to calculate from the center point, the y displacement of the center point, uh, I'm actually going to use this 3.1. Um, I believe that's the center point here. So 3.1 divided by 2 is 1.55, hence why the y coordinate of this is 1.55. So let's go ahead and create first our center pad. Escape location zero zero. That's good. I'm going to put this on the top layer because it's a it's a pad. Let's create a rectangle and our width is one point seven millimeters. Our height is one point five four. I'm going to go ahead and copy, control C, control V, and I'll just make another pad here. Now this pad will be our thinner pad on the outside. So let's start by putting it in the right position. So we have 0 0.2 and 1.55. Dimensions are 0 0.225 and 0 0.7. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy, control C. And I'll paste it, control V. And let's just put down all six of these. All right, I went ahead and filled in all of them. Now they have rounded corners, so I'm gonna go ahead and find similar objects. Let's say anything that's in that same layer, okay. It'll select all everything. And instead of rectangular, let's go ahead and do rounded rectangular. And to me, that looks good. Next, we have the package dimensions, which we are going to use for the assembly layer. So let's go on assembly and create a drawing. Now I'm going to set my grid to millimeter. That way it's easy to see. Uh, let's actually do 0.5 millimeter. So we'll see on the top left here, we have our XY. 1.5, 1.5. Gonna go ahead and draw an assembly box. Right around the dimensions of the package. And then I'm gonna draw my notch. This is way too thick. So let's go ahead and use a width of 0 0.1. Perfect. 
and I'm also going to add my designator dot designator text height let's make 0 0.4 and stroke width let's make 0 0.1 and I'll put this right in the middle next we are going to create the 3d body so we're going to go to the 3d bodies layer and place extruded 3d body I'm going to go right around and escape and let's give this we set our height according to our diagram is one millimeter now let's see what this looks like by pressing the number three to go into 3d mode and we will see that we have our 3d body it's a little block and all of our pads I'm going to press 2 to go back. Now in our PCB library, we will rename this to something that makes sense. So right now it's called PCB component. I'm going to double click on that and let's call this sensor 9 axis. The final thing to do is we need to actually assign what these pins are. So for that, Let's go to the top of our data sheet and take a look at this. So on the left, it's all no connection. So set our designator to NC. All right, we've gone ahead and labeled all of our pins according to the diagram. And that is it in terms of creating the footprint for the nine axis sensor.